Kukilsinchok is one of my signature dishes. About 40 years ago, it was one of the first complex dishes that I learned how to make well. Because of my extreme familiarity with this dish, I feel well qualified to come right out and declare that the original French version is quite terrible by comparison. I won't be showing you that. What I will show you is my own original signature Russian fusion version of the dish accompanied by clear annotations in text as to what changes you make in order to produce a more traditional American version. Both absolutely delicious. This is one of the rare times when I will ignore the original recipe completely. The first step in this is going to be making the court bouillon. Uh, I've got lemon, uh, some green onions, nice big healthy ones, bay leaf, garlic, fresh ground white pepper, paprika, and a dry white wine. Uh, these onions are going to be used in, in two portions. They're going to take just the, the very little mostly white part here for the, for the first saute and then we'll, we'll cut these up and, and weigh them in just a minute. Uh, into a pan that's heating up we're going to add that three quarters of an ounce of butter it starts to foam up. I'm adding the um, sliced sections of that onion and the paprika. Just the white parts of the onion now. I'm going to cook this just until it's fragrant, maybe uh, one minute, and the heat's on medium. Between one and ten, it's on five. It's been about a minute now, uh, a couple minutes. Yeah, you can see that. The onions have softened, and you've got this nice uh, brown butter sort of smell going on here. Now I'm going to add white wine. Bay leaf. Take this clove of garlic, just crush it under the side of a knife, throw that in. I've got the green onions. I'm just going to coarsely chop these. Toss those in. And that white pepper. And I'm going to stir this around and we're going to get this up to a slow simmer just for about 10 minutes only. Just 10 minutes. You don't want to overdo it because these green onions will start taking on a nasty tone. If you if you cook them too much, so just about 10 minutes. That's all, and, and uh, I'm lowering the heat even a little bit more, down to four out of one to ten. It's been 10 minutes. I'm going to add 200 mils of water and that ounce of lemon juice, 30 milliliters of lemon juice, and uh, stir this around. Now I'm going to move it off the heat and just let it cool down the way that it is right now. I'm not going to. I'm not going to mess with it anymore, but I do want it to cool down. I'm choosing to use shiitake mushrooms here, but you can certainly use ordinary champignons. The first step, though, is that you need to go through these. The end of the stems is going to be um, rubbery and nasty, and you want to go through and get rid of all of those first. After you've done that, you want to take the larger mushrooms and uh, cut them in half. You want to make them roughly the same size as the scallops. Now into very hot pan. So if you've got an infrared thermometer, this is a surface temperature. This pan right now is about 250 degrees Celsius. A little bit of oil. Now we're going to put the shiitake. And don't stir them around too much um, because otherwise they won't have a good chance to develop uh, that color that, that flavor that you want on them. So get them positioned so that they're in a single layer and let them sit for, for a couple minutes before you turn them. Well, as they cook, of course, you're going to turn them some. And we're only going to cook these for about three or four minutes in all. These are going to remain a little bit on the rubbery side compared to regular mushrooms. It's actually kind of a good thing in this dish because it complements the, the texture of the scallops. Now, I'm going to flambe these with, with an ounce of cognac. And kill the heat and just let them cool off.
I transferred these mushrooms to a bowl for storage. This pan is not going to be cleaned out. We're going to use this to cook the scallops later. Do not clean it. Just leave it sit the way it is. Now if you can get day boat scallops that were never frozen, that's even better. Here they're extremely hard to come by and very expensive, like $70 a pound kind of expensive. Um, so I'm using frozen. What you want to do is you want to soak them in water, not only to bring them up to room temperature, but also to get rid of the, the tripolyphosphate that they inevitably uh, put in them. And that's what's making this, mostly what's making this water cloudy. So after they're, they're soft, you can fill with your fingers. Now we're going to start draining them and, and warming them up to room temperature. Scallops have what's called an abductor muscle. It's this little strip um, that's a tough band of tissue that goes around the outside. Often when you when you buy them this has already been removed for you but you have to go around and, and look and if you find anything like this this just gets tossed out because otherwise it's going to be uh, a tough little like rubber band in in uh, the person's mouth who's eating it. So these, these actually look okay uh, but often you'll you'll find this little stretch this little piece of extra tissue along the edge uh, that has to be removed. Now right now, this is the first step. I'm just draining these on, on four layers of paper towel. I'm going to put some more paper towel over the top of them, drain them some more, and try to get all the moisture out of my can. It's been 30 or 40 minutes and uh, I don't know, maybe six changes of paper towel in order to get uh, the uh, all of the moisture, a lot of the moisture, you still can't get all of it out of these scallops, but you want them dry. Now I'm seasoning them quite liberally, as you can see, with coarse salt and a little bit of pepper. You can use white pepper if you object to um, seeing black spots on your scallops, but in the, in the final dish, in the cream sauce, you, you won't see this anyway, and the black pepper is actually better flavor. So I ignore the rule of using white pepper on, on fish here because um, it has a better taste and like I said, you, you won't see it in the end anyway. So you can see these are nicely salted and peppered. Now I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of flour, a little bit. Do not dredge them in flour. Sprinkle a little bit and then that way the, the last little bits of moisture that are in there will be uh, kind of picked up by, the, by that flour before we cook them. Okay. Now that the court bouillon has uh, cooled down, I've washed out the pan briefly and I'm going to strain this back into the same pan and get rid of those uh, uh, vegetables, onions and bay leaf and all. And we'll keep this off to the side. Now this is our court bouillon that was strained. I'm bringing this back up to a simmer now first before we get the scallops cooking because after the, the scallops are brown they're going to go into this court bouillon to finish. Okay, I've got a nice hot pan here. I'm going to add, it isn't blazing hot yet. I'm going to add some olive oil to it. Crank up the heat a little bit more. You don't want to crank up the heat all the way at first because it's still got some of those remnants of the, the mushrooms that were browned in it. But uh, now that it's a little bit hot, now I'll add the olive oil, olive oil to it and, uh, and get it even hotter before we cook these scallops. Okay, oil starting to smoke. Two minutes. That's what you want to see, you want to see some nice golden on here. And, uh, and then it's going to go into the, the court bouillon. And here we have the scallops going into the court bouillon to finish. They're only going to be in here for about one minute that the scallops were cooked in. It's going to be deglazed with uh, some sherry. Scrape up all these bits. And then this gets strained into the pan also. along with, here's the scallops that were cooked, whatever juice runs off of them, they also go goes into that court bouillon. Now the court bouillon gets um, cooled down and left to sit to the side and we're going to incorporate this into the, the bechamel. Finally, the end game in sight here finally, this is uh, 22 grams, about uh, three quarters of an ounce of butter and a tablespoon of flour. We're going to begin making the roux. And after a few minutes, we have a white roux. You can look at my other video on just on how to make roux. 
here's the uh, cream being added. Now within a minute or so, this will thicken up and it'll tighten up. And now I've turned the heat off completely. And I'm actually going to let this cool down. This will prevent curdling later. You don't want to keep working with it while it's hot. Let it let it cool down. Just let it sit for a good five minutes. And I've had the heat off now for actually about ten minutes because this is quite stodgy. Now I'm going to add all of that um, pork bouillon to this the scallops are cooked in and I'm going to begin heating this on a low heat. We want to keep this at a slow simmer. Do not just boil this off. You will ruin it. It has to be done at a slow simmer. It's a painstaking process. I know. Start thickening it up this way. I've kept it between about 70 and 75 degrees now for half an hour. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt. It may need more later. We'll adjust that later. And now I'm going to add those mushrooms that we fried way back earlier. And we're going to continue reducing this with now with the mushrooms in it. Same temperature, about 75 degrees Celsius. After another five or ten minutes, continue soft, slow reduction. You'll see this is this is getting nice and thick. When I drag the spoon through, you see how long it takes for it to fill in. Now I'm going to use a finishing sherry. It's a very sweet sherry. I'm going to use this uh, Pedro Jimenez um, San Emilio sherry. This is a dish fit for royalty. So we're going to pull out all the stops. We're going to put in about a tablespoon of this. Now we are ready for the final assembly. All we have to do, we can we can refrigerate it at this point. We can refrigerate the scallops at this point, and finish the whole thing off at the end. Or you can just keep this warm on a back burner and proceed right now. It's up to you. It won't make any difference. Now while the broiler is preheating here, I've got uh, some slices of bread. I've buttered on one side. I'm going to turn them over and butter them on the other side. After you've buttered them on both sides, then you're going to cut them up into little cubes here that will become like uh, the crunchy croutons on top. And I finally got all the components assembled. Put this into a gratin dish. Here's our sauce and our mushrooms. Get a little bit, a little bit more sauce than we need for this dish, but uh, that's okay. It's better to have too much than too little. And then we position these over the top of it, and this goes into the broiler to finish. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.